Daily graphic this morning is quite heavy, if you ask me, and uh, there's a, because there's a special Independence uh, Day pullouts there. So Ghana 63, if you find it, you will enjoy the Daily Graphic. Trust them to bring you all the fine detail. And it says Kumasi gears up for 63rd Independence and um, 1950 to 19, uh, 2020. And we are the oldest in the line of work. We have evolved in the giant in the industry. So that's Ghana's oldest newspaper. They have the bragging right and all of it. The Ghanaian Times, government commits additional $2 million uh, to fight COVID-2019. Health Minister, the World Health Organization says $35 million, $2 million plus 2.5, that's $4.5 million. Woefully inadequate in the eyes of the WHO. Nasikano Wahim. Kwesi Nyantechi, another charged with fraud, granted 1 million Ghana cities bail. Court frees 20 suspected secessionists. And I am satisfied with their preparedness to combat coronavirus disease. President says as he tours the airport yesterday and also the Accra Regional Hospital. And he had a giant face mask uh, on his face. All the people behind him didn't have a face mask. And I'm thinking, were they there for the photo ops or what? On the back page, Tema Wagadugu Port project begins next year. And uh, the Daily Guide, Ghana 63 special supplement in there. NDC threatens Airbus chaos. MTN launches telephone conversation. And Nyantichi charged with fraud. Nana storms Kotoka over Chinese Ebola. And US-based man petitions against the MPP's candidate filing to go to parliament. Finally, the business finder will meet uh, $1 billion revenue target. Vegetable growers, exporters are beat. And GMPC cut sword for $2.5 million Tema Mahia Hospital. Make trade policy more favorable for local firms, according to the TUC. My guest this morning is Nana Damwa. He speaks for the Energy Ministry. He's a member of the MPP's communication team as well. And also, the Honorable Abdul Aziz Mohammed is the MP for the Mion constituency in the northern region. And he is here on the ticket of the uh, NDC. Gentlemen, welcome. Fist bump, fist bump. Corona has come. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, careful. How are you doing, Nana? By Friday morning. God, by the grace of God. Did you say Friday morning? It's a Thursday morning. Yeah, it's a Thursday. But it looks like a Friday morning. I know. Kind because of tomorrow is a holiday. <laughs> Happy birthday to Ghana. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> good morning to you. Good morning to your listeners as well. It's, it's always a pleasure to be here. And I hope mm. that um, we'll be able to you know, speak to the issues the way that the people of Ghana mm. want us and give the right information as is needed. Okay. Mo, how are you? I'm blessed. And uh, how are you doing too? Alive and well. Uh, uh, let me add my voice to... What Nana has just said to wish Ghana a happy birthday, mm. and that should spare us uh, to do more mm. for our country than we are currently doing. At 63, I'm sure if Ghana was a, a, a civil servant, mm. as, as in a person, uh, he would have been in the third year of uh, uh, retirement. Right. And so we can't take it for a joke. Mm. We should do more to uplift the living conditions of our people. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's start off uh, from Kanishi yesterday. Something shocking hit me. Um, the footbridge, one of the footbridges at Kaneshi, we're told there was an overloaded truck that hit it, and the, the bridge now is in a very, very dangerous state. The assemblyman for the area, uh, Frederick Asante Krodia, put it on his Facebook page, and my good friend also, uh, Emmanuel Nikwate Kwate, put it out there and actually appealed that we take a look at it. I want you to, to have a look at it. If the video is ready, AJ, please toss it in. And let's have a look at what's happening to the footbridge. Perhaps that should spare a conversation on our maintenance culture. And you can join us on WhatsApp 02021 That's our WhatsApp line 02021 well, well, I'm sure we can hold on and, and look for the video. But let's, let's do an assessment. Ghana 63. Have we gone or have we come? Have we, have we achieved as much as we would, Nana? Well, um, that's a question that we need to look at and look at critically. Because mm. you see, I don't think that anybody would say that Ghana today is a paradise. Mm. The president himself admitted or mm. admits that Ghana is not a paradise. Mm -hmm. But we also need to celebrate our successes. We need to balance it out. And we need to look at Ghana in the general context of where we are coming from mm. and, and where we want to be. Now, if you consider the fact that we're the first um, black African mm. country mm 
to become independent and we were, you know, there was a lot of promise. The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it's liberal total liberation of the African continent. That the time has come for the black man to show that he can govern or mm. misgovern himself. Then most people would want to lean towards the misgovern aspect of it that we haven't really done as much as we should have mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. We had a vision at independence that we were going to become a country where everything was organized. And today, if you look at it carefully, not it will be it's a shame, but we need to be truthful and honest with ourselves that not everything is as organized mm -hmm. as we would have wanted it to be. However, we've also had some modest successes. Mm -hmm. We've had some modest successes. We have managed, for example, over the last 20 something years to keep our, our, our constitutional uh, you know, governance. And mm. we've done very well in that regard. If you take into consideration the fact that we've had four coup d'etats over, over, over the period right. of 63 mm. years, you, you would also then want to factor in the fact that those years were practically lost years mm -hmm. that we couldn't do a lot. Mm -hmm. But we've had constitutional rule right. for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. We are beginning to see modest steps. Today, there is a grand operation to ensure that at least open defecation is eliminated in this our country. Some mm -hmm. people might say that, for example, using the Ministry of Zongo Development to try and set up toilets in inner cities mm -hmm. is, is a mediocre uh, thing that has to be done. But the reality is that we need to accept the fact that these are the challenges that face our people. The, the Gamma project has been in existence, as far as I know, uh, since the time of uh, Mayor Van der Poy. I remember toilet at half price, toilet at 25 percent, toilet at 75 percent. I remember. But the challenge was, however, that a lot of these households could not even afford to mobilize the little amount of monies that were needed mm. to, you know, partner with. Some didn't even have space. So for you to put now, the what we are there. seeing is that the Ministry of Zongo Development, for example, is making up for those payments mm. and creating those spaces to ensure that these people get it. For some of us, that might be a very mediocre thing mm. that that government, mm. you know, mm. government shouldn't be getting itself involved in. But the reality is that these are our challenges mm. as a people. This is where we are. This is where we are coming from. And okay. if we acknowledge those challenges mm -hmm. and deal with it head on and face on. That's how we are going to make progress. We right. cannot continue to play the ostrich right. and hide from our issues and bury our head in the sun and say that, oh, we need to do only the big projects that mm. will give us, you know, um, um, a lot of clarity or uh, give us a lot of acclaim. Mm. Mm. Today, as we speak, Ghana hosts the world's largest medical drone delivery service anywhere in the world. Mm. That's a good plus. That's also something that we might want to, you know, mm. look at. Yes, it came at a point where we didn't have ambulances. Not all the roads in this country have been done. But we this is the year of roads and we are making critical progress in that regard. It, it, we it, have it, it does appear to me that Ghana doesn't have a blueprint. So if you go to America they have what we call the American dream whether it's Obama, Kennedy, whoever becomes President Trump, you have a plan to make America great again and to make it a superpower and to follow a certain course. So we are going to Kintampo. Whether you want to go through Volta region or go through uh, Western North, the, the destination is Kintampo. Do we have a destination like that for Ghana? I think we do. Everybody um, comes and it appears they want to do what they want to do. I think we do have a, have a plan. We do have a vision. Um, you might want to avert your mind to what the NDPC, National mm. Development Planning Committee, Commission, does. I'm aware that the uh, Professor Stephen Adai led committee has, you know, looked at some of the documents that were there. I think we had a 40 year, 40 -year development Dr. Nimoy Thompson's that they have. Uh, mm. I think they've made some changes to it to make it shorter and more practical. Uh, the problem is not a lack of vision. I don't think so. Really? We had Vision 2020. Mm. We've had several other documents. But Vision 2020 was woefully implemented so f cube was part of vision 2020 you've come to the point that i was seeking to make but the mm. problem is not a lack of vision we all know that okay the visions have always been there from 1957 yeah. we had a seven-year development right. plan we right. moved it later to all of those things mm. we've been through various phases mm. we had operation feed yourself right. which we could not sustain mm. so the reality is as for vision we have as what I is that here, problem as i said here as a Ghanaian, mm. you have a vision of what you you will not be sad if ghana turns into dubai tomorrow you will not be sad. Mm. I don't believe my brother will be sad. The problem is getting there, mobilizing all our necessary resources and getting the chunk of our people to believe that this vision, this is how we need to um, get to this vision. That's mm. where the problem has always been. Unfortunately... And, and there seem to be a certain divide between the political class and the people who are being ruled. The reality is that with the political class, actually, if you look at it clearly... Mm. Some may say that there is an inflection of values because the NPP tends to be a capitalist 
party in court, but they are the ones that tends to deliver a lot more um, social intervention. So mm -hmm. when you talk about capitation grant, when you talk about school feeding program, when you talk about free SHS, when you talk about the National mm -hmm. Health Insurance mm -hmm. Program, these are seemingly socialist programs that are being driven. But it's also underpinned by a certain reality mm -hmm. that even though we believe in the capital market and the free market, we also understand that we are in a sub-Saharan African country mm -hmm. where development is not the same. We capture it succinctly when we say that mm -hmm. so we understand that that's, that's mediocre. That's to say, okay, um, you, you have a class of 40, you became 38, or you, you, you hit 38, and your father says, why are you number 38 in class? They, oh, I did better than Mo and another Mo, so I've done well. No. What we are saying is that we believe in a free capitalist economy mm. where you should be allowed to use your talents to you know, create a future for yourself. However, we admit that because of the fact that you know, we all don't have the same opportunities, Ghana as a country must provide a basic baseline. Why, why that, can't you assume to, uh, aspire to be the tallest finger? You see, the asp so, or the longest so, finger. So, so if, for example, I happen to have gone to a private institution um, in, in, in the previous days, under the SSC <coughs> system that we had, yeah. if I went to a private school, my chances of passing were higher than those that went to a, 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 a public school. Mm. And so if all things being equal, my chances of going to a Kwabotri or a Presec or something like that were brighter mm. than those who went to those public schools. And if we did not ensure that we put in some mechanisms to safeguard everybody, all things being equal, I had a brighter chance at making it in life than the others. Okay. Now, what, the MPP, what, the, what the MPP logic is, is that, listen, fine, all fingers are not the same, but being a Ghanaian must come with some basic values mm. that are added to it. So free healthcare, you must have healthcare because you're a Ghanaian. So if you are born and your parents are registered on the National Health Insurance, at least those benefits are given to you. We've also taken it further to ensure that capitation grant was free. We mm. realized that that capitation grant was not enough because it created a problem. Some people did not even have what to eat mm. before they go to school and they would go to, the parents would not even allow them to go to school. All the kids themselves would not go to school before. Mm. They need to eat. So we brought in the school feeding program. It's not been the best. It could have been implemented better, but at least that intervention is there, and we can continue to improve upon it. We now realize that children were terminating school at 15 years mm. with no practically employable skills. So we've taken it a step further to the free SHS. Free SHS comes with its own um, challenges. The double track system is obvious. Mm. However, we are continuing to implement these while we're fine-tuning these things. That's what I speak about, you, you know, adding basic you, you know, value. You know, you know the, the interesting, and, and do one we'll final, then I'll go to more. The interesting thing about the things you have enumerated is that we have very fine concepts, very fine vision, but we fail at the implementation. I don't think... So, so NHIS, for example, we all agree is a good thing. President Gouveau even went <clears throat> a step further to say pregnant women, free delivery. Yes. What has happened to that? Okay. <clears throat> so now, we're doing FQ and the JSS system that you and I had, maybe more as well was that we were supposed to have done technical drawing, technical skills, life skills, vocational studies. And the concept was that by the time you're done with JSS, even if you don't continue to the SHS level, you could be a good mason, a good carpenter, a good seamstress, or something like that. We have allowed all these things to whittle away. And we are trying to reinvent the wheel. What are we doing to ourselves? Okay, so I don't think that there's necessarily a failure of, of, of implementation all across board. I think that there are significant challenges and we need to deal with it. But ad admitting that there are challenges and saying that, oh, we know we have not done very well, is not enough. Well, I, I started <laughs> by telling you that Ghana is not a paradise as you speak. Ghana is not where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. However, the reality is that, my brother, that's how life is. When challenges come, you fine-tune yourself, you make the necessary changes and confront it. Okay. Today, as you speak, you've realized, you've made an issue with the curriculum that it used to be a certain, mm. we've made mm. changes. But you may have heard in the news the last couple of days that yes, indeed, we've again looked at the curriculum and made changes to it. It means that we admit that we are not where we want and, to and be. And we don't have textbooks to, to even teach. That's, that's my problem. That's a challenge, but you take a step and you move on to the next step, and you move on to the next but, step. But that's and, a big challenge. And, that and you're, you're, re, you're reworking a curriculum, and we're saying that we're trying to make it better, and there are no textbooks. If we are no newspapers here, how do we review them? Listen, 
So at least, if not for anything at all, that's why I started by saying that we need to celebrate our, our, our progresses whilst we admit where we are. Okay. If not I hear for you. anything at all, there's that mission that, look, we have a problem. And solving every problem begins by admitting that okay. we have a problem and trying to understand what the problem is before you go ahead to find the solution. In this case, okay. we are let, actually let me, let trying me to think, implement I, a solution, I think, I think, I think but there are challenges. I think and we'll continue I think, to address I think those you have, challenges. You have had, until, you have until, had until, a good time. I'm asking Perfect. where the textbooks are because, look, Education is important. A miseducated generation is much more dangerous than weapon-wielding people. That's true. I must tell you, if somebody, if you go to a village and the person who is slightly educated is the one controlling everything and misinforming them, you can imagine how dangerous that is. But Bo, let's talk 63 years on. Um, have we come or have we gone? Nana had virtually turned the, your studios into um, a political platform to okay. campaign. I, I, hope, 63, you don't, I 63, hope you, you 63, don't do what you're accusing him 63 of. 63 years uh, of independence. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we have some issues that we can pride ourselves with, at least if for nothing at all. Um, for, for the past uh, um, 25 to 30 years, we've had a stable democracy. Mm -hmm. We have a multi-party uh, constitutional rule that is uh, thriving. Uh, the longest that we have we have witnessed in the history of Ghana, and so those are the issues that we can say we seem to be moving in the right uh, direction. Mm -hmm. But it's not just a matter of uh, uh, multi-party democracy or right. constitutional rule. Uh, we must begin to question the benefits, the fruits of that uh, democracy that we are we are practicing. And like I said, if Ghana was to be a civil servant, right. um, it would have been the third year of um, um, retirement. Largely what we have attained so far has to do with the political independence. Mm. But we still have a lot to do in order to achieve some economic independence. And that's the most important thing for us. Right. I mean, we have, we have had political independence for a very long time, mm -hmm. 63 years. But uh, to a large extent, we are still dependent on the uh, 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 European community and the advanced world. And so that's where my focus would be. Even, even when we have all the resources. Exactly. And we, we have are gold, blessed with all we the have natural cocoa, resources. We have bauxite, almost everything we have that hard working people, exactly. we have farmers. So what is our problem? Is almost, somebody is somebody jujuing us? Almost everything that a country requires to, to thrive. Uh, mm. We are blessed with it and yet uh, we seem not to be making enough uh, progress. Uh, Johnny, we are talking of a country where we are still battling with very high levels of youth unemployment. Where sometimes our youth would have to embark on some perilous uh, a journey to the West just to find some, some jobs to do. And we have a duty as a country to begin looking at uh, uh, these issues. We are a country that is uh, under some uh, debt hang. We have a very huge debt that our country is, is, is attached to. That is not too good for a country that has attained uh, independence for well over 60 years. That cannot be. Our country is engulfed with filth. That should not be the situation of a country that is uh, 63 years old. Uh, we have a president who some three to four years ago promised to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. You and how, Africa. how did you help him to achieve that? Well, uh, you, don't help a as, man, as a citizen. you don't help a man who has not even made an attempt to achieve what, what he intended to do. When he woke up from his bed and came to say Ghana would be the cleanest uh, city in Africa. Johnny, you know it more than I do. Our crowd today is filthier than he came to meet it. And that is a fact. And so we must go through... But he didn't go around throwing rubbish. <laughs> the citizens, and, and on, that, on that seventh day of January 2017, I remember President saying, let us be citizens. Not and not spectators. spectators. And now when you are, when you are a citizen and not a spectator, you <clears> are <throat> called all manner of names when you critique for the good of the country and for the purposes of improving on our governance. You are called names as if to suggest that sometimes they say, oh, this comes from the NDC or the minority. As if to suggest that we were either Burkina Bays or Togolese who do not qualify to input on our national uh, uh, governance. And so I'm saying that a country of 63 years, some of the challenges that we are going through are so busy that I don't think that we should go through them. I have just talked about um, um, youth unemployment. Uh, Johnny, 63 years, I was called kids in our rural areas, mm. still would have to lie on their stomachs to write. There are no classroom um, structures, and that is worrying. We are talking of situations where 
pregnant women would have to carry it on the back of a bicycle or a, a, a motorcycle mm. just to add, uh, 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 assess some 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 uh, medical care. We still don't have doctors in our rural areas. These are issues that should concern us. And so we must go beyond just uh, uh, celebrating the constitutional rule to ensuring that we get the benefits, the fruits of uh, democracy. Mm. That I think we are not, we are not, uh, the last years, yes, we have gone past those years in Africa where Africa was characterized by some military interventions, mm. like in the case of Ghana, mm. for the past 25 to 30 years, we've had a very um, fruitful uh, 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 a democracy, but it doesn't uh, translate, in my estimation, to uh, improving on the living conditions of our people. Mm. Uh, we are talking of a country that is still uh, uh, riddled with high levels of uh, corruption. How do, we, how do we turn our situation around? Because my insistence is that it requires we, we, ha we have everything. Leadership on it whose end. You have been in government before. We have been in government before. And so you see, when you say, when you ask whether we did we come or did we go, yes. when you have a, a, a former president, a, a previous regime of the NDC led by President Mahama, uh, boast of infrastructure such as the Atrobo Gas uh, Project, um, expansion of ports, um, um, expansion of our roads, over $2 billion investment into the health sector. Just some three to four years uh, down the lane, another president comes to parliament and what he boasts of is toilets. I mean, it tells you that we have made some, uh, we have retrogressed as a country. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, come on, I'm telling you of a president. Sanitation who, is important. Oh, I'm telling you that sanitation today in Accra and in Ghana is worse off than it was some three, four years ago. And I've just told you that just some four years ago or so, President Mahama came to parliament, his last SONA address, and talked about massive infrastructure, extension of electricity to over three million people. My brother works at the Minister of Energy. The access to electricity under their regime is somewhere around 0.4 percent <laughs> under President Mahama. It was well around 5 percent. Access to safe drinking water. Where, where are you getting these details from? From the Minister of Energy, he's here. Where? Where? From the Minister of where? Energy. I go onto your phone, you ask me where, as we encourage the Minister of my head. And I'm telling him that your own records that Which you record? brought you that you brought to parliament, to parliament. indicates that access, mm, access, penetration of 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 of, of um, Power. of power mm. is around 0.4 percent under your regime within what margin within what time from 2017 to date we've done 0.4 percent annually on annual basis on and an we on, on annual basis and that's that's a fact you can check okay let's make and progress. we do we did not less than five percent on annual basis these are the fruits of democracy we are talking about access to safe drinking water today in our country some citizens of, of our country still share the same drinking water source with animals. Is that what we want to be uh, proud of? I am saying that under President Mahama, access to safe drinking water was increased from uh, somewhere 56% to about 76%. This is good and exemplary okay. leadership. Okay. Uh, uh, Johnny, he I, talked I, about... I thought, I thought that for once talk, we are going to he talked stay about, off our he parties about, and talk he talked about. He talked about, he talked about uh, um, um, social interventions. Sometimes we have a very narrow understanding of what a social intervention is. In any case, when you tell can, a lie can, repeatedly, can you, can you both tell me? When you tell, can you both tell me which single social intervention you have done, which is or infrastructural development which you have done, which beats the Tamamoto way, which is over fifty years old and still standing strong? That, that both that, of you look me honestly in my in the eye first of all, and right. tell me, hold on, I want your answer and then I'll come to him. The Tamamoto way is more than 50 years old. The quality it of has, that road it has expired. I agree with you. But it is better it, it than is still some solid. roads that are and being so, done and this so day. That borders on the issue of corruption and quality of work that we do. There's no doubt about the quality of that road. But if we live in a country where corruption is at its highest level, mm. you can be sure contractors will do um, shadow works because they would be able to, to compromise government officials. Um, Johnny, we have a very narrow understanding. One. <laughs> we, have, we have a very narrow understanding of what social intervention is. Mm. You see, are you telling me that when you build a chips compound in a rural area where they have no access to medical care, mm. Mm, that is not social intervention. That am, is not social am, intervention. I, I'm, I'm and not, let me put on record. I, I'm not saying that. I'm no, saying no, no, that. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Yes. The Tamamoto way oh. 
I've is expired. Though. I've, I've, I've agreed to that. If that it is if, one of the if Ghana were the country that it had to be, like it's Malaysia, it's South yeah, Korea, yeah. that road would have been wiped off and would have reconstructed it. Exactly. Because exactly. On the books, it has expired. Yeah, yes. And so solid. And it is so much solid. more solid yeah, than most than of the roads that, that, road that we have done that today and so, not so long ago. I agree with you, Johnny. So the question is, what are we, we moving forward or are we going back? If you were to compare what happened under President Nkrumah to what we have seen uh, subsequently, mm. uh, you would uh, not be wrong to say that we have not made progress. In fact, we have uh, retrogressed as, as a country. But as just on the issue of the quick, social, quickly, social, wrap up, social wrap up for me on that one. You see, when you talk about national health insurance and when you tell a lie repeatedly, uh, 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 some people tend to believe it. When you talk about national health, go and read about the history of the national health insurance scheme. In fact, what we had even under President Kufuor was a mutual health scheme. It was only President Mills who moved it from a mutual health scheme to a national health ins insurance scheme where you can take your car to any part of this country and you'd be attended to by a health uh, a facility. Mm -hmm. And in any case, uh, in 1990. 1997. You oppose the same health insurance scheme. And so when you talk about social intervention, mm -hmm. just don't look at the issue of the um, 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 uh, uh, free senior high school. Mm -hmm. Look at even infrastructure that brings relief to the people. Okay, thank you. That is social now, intervention. Now, now, let, me, let me ask you that the same, the the same uh, Akra Tibamuto way question. The product that has expired. Toilets. toilets. They have toilets. Yeah, please, I'm not asking you. The product <laughs> that has expired. Which, which of your projects, would you say matches that? Okay, now um, I would want to. Meanwhile, this was done in the sixties. By I'd the way, I want to clarify something mm -hmm. to you. I mean, genuinely, that first of all, I don't think that any of the political parties today were there in the nineteen sixties mm -hmm. in the current form that they were. So, to say that a project or that has lasted that long would be a very difficult thing. But in terms of impact, mm -hmm. I think that we have rolled out so many social interventions that have had a far-reaching impact on the I'm people. I'm asking of one road, one road that well, both of you have constructed. The initial question. That, I, I, I that, that has stood the test of time like that. I believe that one the, road. I believe one. that the initial question you asked was, we should mention a social intervention. No, I said one road. One well, road. I was sitting right here. One road. One okay, road. Okay, well. That has, like, that has like, lasted like, after like, over, over 50 years. Like, like, like I, I have said to you, it's impossible for me to identify a single road that has lasted over 50 years because the first president of Ghana was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. So I don't think Let me beat it down to 20 years. <laughs> Let me beat it down to the 20 years. Well, the, I mean, MPP, so the first time that the MPP government came into power was in the year 2000. Right. So we, it's impossible okay. to ask us for 20 so years. So 2000, 20 years. The first road that you did. The first road that you did. Can you beat your chest? Unfortunately, I was a bit. I was not as mature as that. But what I want to say to you is six. May oh oh oh. Well, I'm just helping you. Stay six. Were even born around that time. Were you born at sixty six? Ah, but you say you are not grown at. Is is to. So the point I want to make is that, um, in terms of social intervention, I don't. I don't think that it's in doubt that this the NPP has contributed the most in terms of uplifting our people from wherever they find themselves to a basic minimum. Okay. That is not in doubt. Now, but, now, now, but, now, now, but now, school, children, school children are still marching in the scorching sun, and tomorrow they will. Last year, I remember 13 children fell off, and they, were ha ha they had to be carried off. Some members of the security agencies also fell off. Is it still relevant to be marching? At I just, 63, I just want to because the, the background is that we started marching in the 1900s for Empire Day under British rule. So, the colonial mentality of marching, do we still need to keep it? I just want to make a point before I, I, I attack okay. that issue. Now, if you say that um, the president comes and he's talking about toilets, and mm -hmm. toilets is all the achievement that they have, this is the reason why we are where we are. You decide to ignore interventions like the free SHS. You mm. decide to ignore the fact that we have the largest medical drone service anywhere in the world. Mm. You decide to ignore the fact that for the first time in this country, we have an ambulance in every constituency, <laughs> improving <laughs> emergency health care. Mm. You decide to ignore the many other benefits that people have seen across the length and breadth of this country mm. and reduce it to toilets. This is where propaganda comes in, and that's why we are where we are. Okay. Moving forward, the reality is that, listen, 
Um, it's not an easy thing to, to do that whole marching thing. I have trained as a security person, and I can tell you that it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not a joke mm. at all. I mean, you know, in those days we in training. I did it for to, six years, JSS and SSS. You used to stand in boots mm. with, with all these camouflage, and yeah. I, I can imagine. I think that it's about time, and I think the general conversation around it has started, and over time we'll see, we'll see the improvements there, that maybe we need to vary it a little bit. It is not, I do not think that it is necessarily a colonial mentality as opposed to a conservative approach mm. as, a, as, a, as a country. This is the way we've done it for a very long time. So to be able to change it, it takes quite a lot of, you know, broad-based conversation to get a lot of people to shift away from that traditional mm. idea that mm. they have seen it to move it forward. I don't think this is a huge challenge at all. Um, the risks are there. It's obvious to all of us. And as we continue to have these conversations, more and more people will be enlightened to expect different things. Um, Ghana is moving forward. We are beginning to see the necessary changes. I mean, mm. originally people were expected to stand strict and, and, <laughs> and not even be able to move. Mm. But I believe that over time these rules are being, you know, yeah, relaxed, relaxed a, bit. a bit more. In, in, in now we are even beginning to see some g gymnast uh, mm. coming to display mm. and all of that. So we would all get to that point where a shift will become possible. I think we need to look at it seriously. Okay, more. Seriously. Do we still need to match in the Scottish sun? subject the children to the heat uh, i am tempted to believe that we should review some of those of those uh, practices i mean um, we can continue subjecting our kids to the scorching stand to be marching throughout the day uh, we should focus more on on what we are doing for 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 those kids mm. and so um, um i would think that we should we should have a a, a review a review of, of that but Back to the issue of what we are doing for ourselves as a country and whether the democracy that we have enjoyed mm. for the past 25 to 30 years is yielding fruits. And uh, uh, just responding to what my, my colleague here talked about. You see, when you, when you are engaged in some propaganda mm. on such a serious a matter, you need to be a corrected. Johnny? Go and read the message of the State of the Nation Address that was uh, delivered by the President some few days uh, ago. And you know, and compare that one to the last episode of President Mahama. Now, we are talking about a President who comes to boast about building about 100 toilets and that they will build more. He's talking about the delivery of you, ambulances. You've said all of that of, before. Of, of ambulances. You've you said all of that before. No, of ambulances to every constituency mm. in this country. It is not the case that Prior to the delivery of those 307 ambulances, there was no ambulance in this country. You brought if some that were not fit were, for purpose. They, that is they not true. 164 ambulances that we brought were working and working well. There are private ambulances in this country. And let me just ask you a question. I don't answer when questions. An, well, uh, it's a rhetorical uh, mm -hmm. a question. Mm -hmm. when, an ambulance, <laughs> when an ambulance picks Why a don't you ask me? Eh? Mm -hmm. Where does it take the, the patient to? The market? I don't know. It obviously takes the patient to a health facility. Okay. You have been in power for three and uh, uh, three years and some few months. Mm. How many chips compounds have you constructed? How many hospitals have you constructed? That should be your worry. Okay. Even those that you can't inherit. You. Thank you. You have I, abandoned I, them. I have an interest. I have an interest. Over the past two years, I've been talking about the Independence Square. Yes. And I've been talking about the fact that it is coming down. The Independence Square is of great essence to us as a people, particularly because it was built and called the Black Star Square. And it was used to welcome the Queen yeah. of England at the time um, when, when we, she was coming down for our Republic Day, Day celebrations, which has been canceled, by the way. But the Independence Square, as it is now, is breaking apart piece by piece. And I've done that documentary. It's on YouTube. You can look for it. Independence Square begs for attention. And I'm worried that nothing is happening. In fact, the last Teacher's Day celebration, the May Day celebration, when it started to rain and the president was moved under the days, I cringed. And I'm asking myself, where is our maintenance culture? Where is it, Nanadamwa? Not just the Independence Square. We can use that as a focal point, but there are so many of them. Look, the water fountain at the Nkrumah Circle. Have you been there recently, the, near the Dubai? No. Go around. Okay. So, like, where I is said, our maintenance culture? We spend money, and then we allow it to go. 
like I said, um, it's, it's, it's part of the challenges that we, we have to accept and deal with. We haven't had a smooth ride all throughout, and we need to acknowledge that fact. We also need to acknowledge the fact that we've made some, we've taken some steps which are good. However, there are problems, mm. and we now need to look at those problems and deal with it. So our maintenance culture, for example, is a big problem for all of us. I don't think that anybody here will challenge that idea that our maintenance culture is bad. It is very, very bad. Mm. It leads to losses worth millions of dollars every year. I'll give you a typical example. Now we've seen a campaign about um, street lights, and we're asking that the street lights should be redone mm. and all of that. Look, as of December of last year, I can tell you that we, at the ministry, you know, we facilitated the lighting up of almost the entirety mm. of Accra. As we did an audit very recently, we realized that a lot of them, Mm -hmm. A lot of them have gone bad because some individuals have gone to cut, you know, the some wires, of the cables, some cells of them, and, and right now they're even because of, of the kind of bulbs that mm -hmm. we are using, the LEDs, they are taking them away. But why? These are the issues that we need to look at. Now, what it therefore means is that after we have gone back to fix all of these things, we need to put in place a security mechanism to monitor it, which is also going to cost us more money. So we fix the street lights. Let's say we fix the street lights for 100 million cities we are going to have to spend an extra 50 million cities which would have taken us elsewhere to light up those areas just to monitor those street lights that we have already done that's how we increase our cost and make things difficult for ourselves as a it, 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 it does appear to me that the city goes to sleep uh, after 5 p.m if you go to it's, new york city the, the city, city the metro guards don't sleep the city they run shifts but in our case you have whether AMA, LADMA, LECMA, KMA, whatever it is, TMA. The real, the real. They come to work. By this time, they are at work. By 5 p.m., they have closed and they have gone home. The real issue is... That's where littering will come in. People will pilfer. People will openly defecate. And then in the morning, we all come and complain. The real issue Can we not run shifts? The real issue is, look at the cost implication of their running shifts, for example. Take the Legon um, Gempa Bypass route, for example. Look at the number of street lights that we have there. It will take no less than about 10 to 20 people to monitor mm. that, that, um, that, that stretch mm. every day. Now, doing that means that we have to pay these people's salary, we have to kit them, we have to make sure that everything that they need to be able to do that work is being done. And mm. that's an additional cost. I don't know how much money AMA is making, but I'm very sure that if we ask them to employ more people to be able to run it, it will come with issues of cost. It will also have to mean opportunity costs that some of the services that they are providing to this country, to the city, has to be stopped to ensure that they can, or they'll have to raise additional money to taxation and levy which will go to increase the cost of living in this very city that we are talking about. So these are the difficulties. Like I have said, it is a problem. People continue to think about it. We will continue to think about them and find innovative solutions to it. Okay. For example, do we have to use drones, for example, mm. to monitor uh, the streetlights? Mm. Do we have to do that? Why can't we just ourselves self-sensor -sen -sen and make sure that these things are not done? When you are, are involved in an accident, and you knock down the post, mm. just report it to us so we would know what to do. There may be a small levy that would, you know, be charged to mm. you, but that money will help fix that particular post and we can get back on track. But these are grave difficulties. But that's not to say that let's lift our hands in the air and cry and say that everything has gone down. No. Mm. 63 years ago, Ghana wasn't the way it was. I mean, we can cast our eyes to some of the big development that we have today. Mm. Through the One District, One Factory initiative, a Kumfi Juice is there. We've gone through our own process of, <laughs> of lambasting it and telling ourselves that it's a bad idea and it was never going to be achieved. But we've done something. We are continuing to uh, make How progress. are we maintaining it? That's a conversation. Well, I know how that, for example, I know, for example, that there are not enough outgrowers. So occasionally, they have to go down to wait for some of the pineapples to mature, but at least that's a step okay, forward. Thank you. Now we have one village, one dam. Thank you. Off. Thank you People very much. People can challenge no, the no, fact no, that Don't read your party's not... manifesto here. Let's talk Ghana. Uh, Mo, uh, you've seen that. You've seen that. And that's that's the extent. See, that's the extent mm. of of rot and damage at the Independence Square. I want us to connect that with our maintenance culture. You know, we spend so much to put up stuff, and we don't care about it. I was laughing because Nana. In talking about the culture of maintenance, went to the area of one, one village, one dam, one district, one factory, and equipment. How are they related? Culture of maintenance. 
how they related. I believe you know, that the 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 and begin to and begin to answer them. Well, I mean, it is a known fact that the culture of maintenance in Ghana is really, really poor. Um, is it acceptable? It it cannot be. So why have not. we allowed it? Um, it calls for a change of attitude by the by the by the citizens. Uh, of course, we require some level of leadership, but to a larger extent, we must also change our attitudes. Uh, attitude of uh, public and civil servants, the political class, and even the ordinary Ghanaian needs to uh, change in the area of uh, uh, maintenance of our infrastructure. You don't spend huge sums of money, the taxpayers money to construct a facility and then fail to um, 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 maintain that same facility so that you can have the benefit of, 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 of that facility. And so it, 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 it requires for, 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 for some uh, 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 change. Uh, Johnny, if you'd indulge me, when you talk about maintenance and you veered into the area of a Kunfi one district one factory, ah, you have forgotten of uh, the sugar factory that you came to inherit and even went for 24 million uh, loan facility for the art growers that you've abandoned. And when you even promised to do a factory in every district, now you can only boost of a okay. Are you proud of that? Thank you. That should not be. Thank you very much. Will you be in Kumasi? Will you be in Kumasi tomorrow? Let me just. Uh, will you be in Kumasi tomorrow no, for the celebration? Not Why not? Kumasi. You are not. You are not happy. Um, no, no. That the people of the Ashanti region are getting attention. Oh, I am happy for the people of Ashanti region, and I wish I could make time to go to Kumasi, but I have some uh, uh, commitments in the Volta region that I would have to uh, uh, honor. Okay. Uh, I will be leader. Uh, Honorable Ah, yes, yes, the, yes, uh, the wife. Spouse, yeah. And uh, my condolences to Honorable Aveji and the family who need to go and support him uh, on Saturday. Right. So maybe I should be on my way to uh, uh, Volta Region, uh, maybe tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and if I'm not too sure yet, but right. um, that is my, my schedule for now. Hmm. And when you even talked about uh, social intervention, get okay. fun. That was meant for needy but brilliant students. Mm. Now we have uh, maybe brilliant but na, 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 few na, na, going for us. Na, 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 we report him at the police station. Actually, na, 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 we na, na, will, will be in Kumasi tomorrow. I will be in Kumasi. Okay. Um, I will be in Kumasi. I think that, um, like I've said, Ghana has had um, its fair share of challenges. Mm. But we also need to celebrate our successes. And you know, all in all, we are making progress. What we need to do is to keep our eye on the ball mm. and ensure that these challenges as we have them now is dealt with we need to continuously do that listen when you're driving the reason why the steering wheel is round is that it's not a one-way road that once you get on it so you continue to make little challenges mm -hmm. you know changes to your course so that you, you stay on track you stay safe and you get to your it depends on who is driving i agree <laughs> well, you're a bad driver <laughs> but ghana is at that part we should all understand that we are on the good course now we are all seeing hey. the necessary, you know, things that are coming up, springing wow. up. There are difficulties, there are challenges, no doubt. We will confront these things and make sure that we get to the destination. Okay. In some time past, it was, we are going, heaven knows where we are going. At least now, mm -hmm. we know where we are going. We know we are on the right path. It's just an issue of keeping our focus. Gonna and be we will get there. And, and, and you're yes, sure, yes, and you're yes, sure yes, that, and yes. definitely you, you get, you gave me a yes. promise the other time that by mid-March, the lights will stop going off. Definitely. So oh, you are I'm sure that, that listen, you have, you have seen it, if you be honest with, with yourselves and with viewers, there's been a general improvement. But you're saying, but did I come to complain to you that my lights are going off? I'm not saying that. You're saying that if I'll be honest, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just <laughs> Did I come saying, to tell you my I'm just saying <laughs> that there's been a huge improvement in it. Yes. But as usual, what we always do, and what personally I do when I'm communicating these matters, is to ensure that I go to the worst case scenario. Okay. So, for example, when it came to the pigging, we issued a statement and said we expect it to end by the 21st of March. It ended realistically around the 23rd of March. But mm -hmm. even when it ended, we. It still had March. It still had March. May I, may I, may I please finish? Wait, yes. wait. Today is oh. the fifth of March. May I please okay, finish? Go ahead. I'll just help you with the dates. Now date. we have. Um, it was done, but there was some analysis that had to be conducted. Is it twenty third of March? Or 20, today is fifth. No, hold on. So I'm it's saying, February. No, no. This is what I'm saying. The pigging exercise. We issued a statement on the seventeenth of January, twenty twenty, right. stating that we expect the pigging alone okay. to be finished by the 23rd of March. Okay, the cleaning of the pipes. The cleaning the of the pipes. Okay. But it actually finished on the 23rd of February. Okay. Now, when we looked at it, we realized that there was some analysis that needed to be done and that it wasn't a completely done deal. Okay. So we looked at it again and delayed issuing a statement. Mm. till WAPCO came out themselves and said they are done 
everything is okay. Now what we are going through is 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 the recommissioning okay. phase where gas has to be reintroduced into the pipes. We need to test it and ensure that it is the entire systems are okay. And then after that, we go to the performance of the machines. Okay. Remember oh. that we also have to convert some of these machines that were converted from gas to other alternative right. fuels back onto right. gas. Okay. And, then, and so that is the process. So you say that mid March, bottom March, we'll be fine. Mo. We'll be fine. Mo. See, this should the, be good news for you. No, the fact of the matter is that, and Nana should admit to that, that Dumso is back. And all that you need to do is to publish a timetable mm -hmm. that would guide individuals Even when and West companies. Africa got pipelines, no mind them. Oh, the nothing. fact of the matter is that our courts, our courts, the, 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 the former president, who is the presidential oh, candidate to the him, the fact of the matter is that. Oh, the fact is that Dumso okay. is back under your watch. Uh, publish a timetable that will guide us. Mm. Uh, why? If you are talking of pigging and cleaning of the of the of, of the of the pipeline. What prevents you from buying a uh, 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 live okay. food to sell your plants? You Thank you very much. Been so, Honorable Mohamed, my friend, do that. Do that. Do that. He's a member of parliament for the yes, Mayon constituency. He was here on the ticket of the <laughs> NDC. And also, Nana uh, Kofi Opong Damwa. He speaks for the energy ministry. He's also here on the ticket of the NPP. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Happy 63rd to all thank of you. us. And we pray that the good Lord will guide us.